Great, so this, uh, this is section 3.1, chapter 3 is all about exponential functions and logarithms, which you may, you may have done before. How many of you have seen logs before? So this should be, should be kind of a review for you. <coughs> exponential functions and logarithm functions, they're just inverses of each other. So we teach one and then we teach the other, okay? And then we do some applications and uh, stuff like that. It's kind of a, I like this chapter and I don't think it's too hard. So I think you'll, uh, you'll like it too, okay? So something of the form f of x equals a to the x is called an exponential function. This number down here is called the base and this thing here is called the exponent. A has to be a number uh, greater than, greater than zero, okay? And uh, and it can't be uh, a can't be <coughs> equal to one. Okay, a is not equal to one. Otherwise, it doesn't doesn't make an a an exponential function. Okay, um, and uh, do you guys know uh, can be any real and and x can be any real number, any real any real number. And depending on what x is, right, um, depending on what x is, that kind of determines the shape of your exponential function. So you guys know about exponents, right? You, you know you can do 2 to the third power, right? What's 2 to the third power? 8, okay? And then uh, how about 2 to the 7.2 power? It's 8 also, okay? Well. So an exponential function, you're plugging in numbers here that are not just integer values, okay? So like you could do, you can make a table of values and you could say, well, two to the, what's two to the zero? zero. Two to the zero is one, right? Two to the one would be two. Two to the two would be four. Two to the, I mean, yeah, two to the three would be eight. Two to the four would be, what's two to the four? 16, 2 to the 5, right? So you can see that exponential functions, they kind of go up really steeply, okay? But you can't just plug, you can plug more than just <coughs> integers in there. Like you can plug in numbers like 7.2. So 2 to the 7.2 is a number somewhere between 2 to the 7th and 2 to the 8th. You understand that? So it's somewhere way, way, way up high. So, how would I get numbers back here? Two to the what? Like two to the negative power. So if I did two to the negative one, right? That's like the same as one over two to the one, right? Which is one half. So negative one, you get out one half, and so on and so forth. Right? That's how you get numbers over here. Will I ever get a number less than zero? No, because no matter what I plug in here, I'm never going to get a negative number because a negative exponent just makes it a smaller number. It doesn't make it. The only way you can make it go below is by sticking a negative sign in front of it. For instance, what if I had, um, what if I had uh, 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 negative y equals, y equals negative 3 to the x? What do you think that would look like? Y equals negative 3 to the x. Anyway, so this would just take <coughs> something that looks, all exponential functions kind of look the same, except by plugging a negative in there, it would take all those values and make them negative, right? So instead of having, like, if I look at, you can make a little table, x, Y, so if this is 3 to the X, negative 3 to the X would just make all those negatives. So for instance, if I plug in X is 0, what's 3 to 0? 1, right? What's, uh, what's 3 to the 1? What's 3 to the 1? 3, right? What's 3 to the 2? 9. And so by plugging a negative in front of those, everything would change to negatives, right? Negative 9. So if this is y equals 3 to the x, which looks like this, then y equals negative 3 to the x would look like this. If this is y equals 3 to the x, 
and y equals negative 3 to the x or psych x, okay? An important point that most of these go through, okay, is, uh, so they go through, yeah, y equals, hold on, y equals a to the x, right, always goes through 0, comma, 1, okay? Goes, goes through 0, 1. I know that's not how you spell through, okay? Also, goes through 1, comma, what? If I plug in 1 in here, what do I get out? If I plug in 1 in here, what do I get out? A, right? So it goes through 0, 1. It goes through 1A. And it also goes through negative 1, 1 over A. Because if I plug in negative 1 in here, I get the fraction, OK? So those are some important points to know on any exponential function. So any exponential function, for instance, this one, is going to go through the point 0, 1, 1, 3, and negative 1, right? Negative 1, 1 third, right? And so it kind of, they, you get that? What that means? So well, it's me. I was wondering after <coughs> uh, Oh, sorry. I keep hearing that song in the car like 5,000 times, so I have to, have to sing it. Um, what if I did, uh, what if I did y equals a to the negative x? What do you think that would do to your function? We're just talking about reflections and <coughs> things like that. Who can tell me? Um, y equals a to the negative x. It's going to take, so if, if it helps you, plug in some numbers. It helps me because I, I can't think this one, okay? So say if, if I plugged in 0, you still get a 1, right? So there's still a point, 0, 1. Let's do y equals, y equals 2 to the negative x, okay? So if I plug in 1, what do I get out? 1 and a half, right? And if I plug in 2, what do I get out? one quarter. If I plug in negative one, what do I get out? Two, right? So the effect of this is what? It flips it over the y-axis, right? So this one <coughs> is going to make it go, it's going to be a flip this way. So if you have a negative exponent up here, it's going to make it go in the other direction. That's how you make it a, a decreasing exponential function, okay? The other one is an increasing exponential function. Okay? What if we already talked, if I threw in a negative, what if I did y equals 2 to the x minus 2? What's that going to do to it? Down 2. Okay? So instead, of, so this one, and if it helps, you make a little table x, y, so it's going to take, if I plug in 0, now I'm going to get out negative 2. If I plug in 1, now <coughs> I'm going to get 2 to the 1, which is 2, I'm going to get out 1, right? Is that right? Oh, negative 1, right? So, hold on, I see someone's hand. So y equals 2 to the x minus 2 is going to shift it, right? It's going to shift it down 2. So normally it would be an exponential function with an asymptote, uh, oh, I didn't talk about the asymptote. Going up like that, okay? At 2, where would I be at 2? What would be the y-intercept? 0, can't, 2 to the, 2 to the 1. Wait, 2 to the 1, it, yeah, there you get 0, right? So this would be the point, 2, 0, and so on. Um, and, what? Yeah. Oh, that's wrong. That's wrong. That's wrong. Um, the intercept's at negative 1. The intercept's at negative 1? Oh, if you plug in 0, you get 1 minus 2. Oh, you're right. Uh, sorry. Okay. So, 0, negative 1. So, it would take 0, 1 and shift it down 2, right? Not from 0, 1, you'd move down 2 to 0, negative. Who had their hand up? Question? Something? Yes, though. Yeah. Okay, 
So that's some stuff on shifting some of these exponentials. You you can play with some numbers and figure out um, what how to how to transform that equation. You can use your graphing calculators to kind of see what it's doing and stuff. But then um, also y f of x equals e to the x. Do you guys know what e is? It, it's not 2 point, it's, no, it's like 2.7 something, isn't it? It's like 2, 2.71 something, blah, 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 blah. It's another irrational number, right? Do you know where E comes from? Yeah. Where? Right after D. Ah, oh, I get it. Uh, no, that was pretty good. No, E is equal to the limit. You don't even need to know this. As x goes to infinity of 1 plus 1 over x raised to the x. Okay? So what is that? You know, I mean, that's where the number e comes from, and it comes up a lot in exponential growth and in continuous growth and compounding interest and stuff like that. But this is where it comes from. So if I take a number, like say I plug in 10 here, 1 plus 1 over 10 raised to the 10th power, I would get a number close to e, okay? And if I did a number 1 plus 1 over 100 raised to the 100th power, I'd get a number even closer to e, okay? So it's just, you're just plugging in numbers. You're adding a very, very small fraction, but you're raising it to the same power, okay? And so eventually you hit some limit, and that limit is called e. And that's why it's irrational, because you could just keep keep plugging in bigger and bigger <coughs> numbers to get it. Okay? Um, okay. Applications. You want to learn about applications? Uh, yeah, you do. Okay? Applications. So, um, one of the most, uh, one of the most common applications of Exponential functions is when you're talking about interest, okay? Compound, compound interest. So if you have something, here's the general formula. A equals P times 1 plus R over N raised to the N times T. You should probably write down that formula. Okay, you know what this is? <coughs> you know what that is? Principle. That's the principal. That's how much you invest, okay? That's the initial amount you put into your account. Princi principal, okay? This is the amount with interest. Amount with interest, interest, after t years, after t years, okay? So, uh, and r is, r is the interest rate. That's the rate. This is n, number of times you compound. per year, okay? Sometimes they call that per annum, A-N-N-U-M, right? And this is T, okay? So this N and this N are the same numbers, okay? So, and this is the time, time invested, okay? So I'll show you the way. Have you seen this formula before? Yes. Probably, okay? So the way this works is, um, well, then for, so this is for compound interest. This is compounded, compounded continuously, okay? Continuously, you end up with the formula um, A equals PERT. Have you seen PERT before? P E to the R T, okay? And what happens, right, it, you can do algebraically show that this quantity in here becomes E, okay, as you compound it 
infinitely many times. And so, so let's do an example problem. Um, what's the example? You invest $9,000 at 2.5% per year. So we're just, um, I thought I had some, um, so you invest uh, $9,000, okay? $9,000 at 2.5% interest, okay? How much will you have? How much dollars, how much dollars will you have after five years if compounded annually? Annually, that is it, I might, annually, quarterly, and uh, continuously. Well, you understand the question? Okay. So, you just plug into the formula. So, the first thing you do is, uh, you want to know A, you're going to plug in 9,000 for the first one. So in the first case, it's just going to be, where's my formula? There it is. <coughs> one, 9,000, not 900. One plus your interest rate, which you write as a decimal, 0 0.025. In this case, you're just dividing by one, right? Because it's compounded annually, so that's just one. N again is one, and T is five, right? So it's one times five. So in this case, you're just really doing 9,000 times 1.025 raised to the <coughs> fifth power. Anyone want to do that on a calculator? Can you do that for me, Bolton? What are you getting? Hold on a second. One hundred eighty-two point seven. Okay, if you compound it quarterly, so quarterly, okay, <coughs> quarterly looks like nine thousand times one plus point zero two five two five divided by four raised to the four times five. Do you understand that? Okay, because. You're getting, so they say, oh, it's com you're getting it compounded quarterly, compounded monthly, compounded continuously. Isn't this great? You're going to make so much more money, you know? But if you're not going to make that much more money because you're only making, whoops, divided by four, right? So, so you're only making a quarter as much interest every quarter, <coughs> right? So you're doing that four times as many times per year. So in this case, God bless you, okay? It would look like 9,000. Okay, times one, what's uh, 0 0.025 divided by four? Can you do that? Someone? 0.00625 raised to the 20th power. Okay, so can you do that? You can be my calculator. What do you get? 10,194.4. 10, 10,194.4. So not that much more, right? Okay, yeah, so you make like, how much more? <coughs> 12 more dollars, 12 dollars and 40 cents. They go, woo woo, that's a great deal. But you know like when you go to, when you buy a car or something, they say, uh, what do they say? Effective interest is something, so it says interest is 5%, effective interest is something else because it's compounded monthly or continuously or something like that. So let's just try continuously, <coughs> continuously, so continuously, okay, it's going to be, ten, ten, I know my writing's bad, but continuously it's going to look like 9,000 times E raised to the point uh, zero two five times 5, okay? So can you do that? 
Well, can, can you handle that on your calculator? 10,198.3, okay? So, yeah, so the E button, just so you know, is right above the natural log button, okay? Because they're inverses of each other, which we'll talk about later. But, um, so you take E, raise it to this power, and then multiply by 9,000, or you, I think you're counting. So only continuously, meaning it's compounded instantaneously every millisecond, right? But you're only making like four more dollars because you're only making 0 0.025 divided by a huge number every single, you know, every instant. So it's kind of weird um, where that was. So you're only making four more dollars. Compounded. Okay. We're done with that section? Yeah, can we stop? Can we stop? Yes. We have to learn about radioactive decay. You don't want to learn this? No, not it. Half life. Half life. Hey, there was a pop song about this just a couple years ago. Radio has to come. So, that you want to use for half-life, okay? I don't know if they have this specifically, in the book, but this is the half-life, right? Half-life, so that's half-life, so half, and half-life is how long it takes something to decay down to being half as much, okay? And, uh, and this is what? What's this? What's a sub zero usually? Is that an H? Uh, that's an H. And this is the this is how much you start with initial amount, okay? And so uh, let's do a problem. Um, the half life of strontium. Strontium. Have you heard of that? Yeah, I sure have. I haven't. The half half life of strontium. 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 Strontinium? Strontinium? How do you spell it? Strontium is 29 years. Okay? That's a short half life. Okay? So, uh, how much is. So, for initial sample, for an initial sample. Uh, uh, 10 grams, 10 grams, 10, 10 grams, uh, how much is left after 80 years, okay, okay, so all you have to do is plug and chuck, right? So A equals A sub zero, 
which we're going to call 10 times 1 half raised to the 80 divided by 29. You understand why that is? Because you're get, so you're, so this is 80 over 29 is how many half lives are you going through, right? So you're going to multiply by 1 half, what's that, almost 3 times, right? Okay. So what do you get if you do that? Did you do that? Calculator guy? How much? 1.16. You have one, is that right? So a half of 10 is 5, half of 5, uh, yeah, that sounds about right. What do you get? Hold on. How much did you get? What did you get, Emma? One point what? I fixed my just 1.47. That sounds about right. About 1.47 grams, okay? So, that's why, you know, people are very worried about radiation and stuff, because radiation, radioactive stuff like uranium and stuff has like super long and high half-lives, like thousands of years, you know? And it's bad, it's bad for your skin, too, um, among other things. But, but like, I had this uh, radioactive treadmill test one time, you know, where they're checking out your heart, like to see if you have blockage in your arteries, so they inject radioactive iodine into your veins and stuff, and they tr so they can trace it, but it but it has a really short half life, so it goes away and like they say, oh, most of it's gone in like 24 hours. So it's got a half life of a few hours, you know, so, so they trace it. And I still have it. Uh, um, so that's how you do that kind of problem. Um, what if they said? Uh, what if they said, when will there be, when will, I'm just making this one up, when will there be the uh, ten, like seven grams left, okay? How would you do that? When will there be seven well, grams left? Seven grams. You'd have to, no, you and don't <coughs> just plug in seven. seven. You plug in seven for this, so you have so you have to go seven, seven <coughs> equals ten what is that, Mr. times yeah. what? What is that? Is it A? Plug in seven, seven for A. Right. Which that's not an A. That is an A. Yeah. That's an A. So you'd have to do something like this. Uh, N over twenty nine. Okay? So what I at this point, since we don't know how to solve this using uh is it Oh, is it T up there? Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Um, We're winning now. You're winning? So it's T over 29. So in this case, since we don't know how to do this yet, we will in a second once we, in a couple problems, once we're solving the exponential equation. But this looks, if it's a half-life problem, it's going down. So this is a decreasing exponential function, whoops, <coughs> which kind of goes down like this. And at this point, the only way you know how to solve it is to graph the line y equals 7, okay? If this were the line y equals 7, right here, and see how they, see where they cross, okay? But we will learn how to solve it with logarithms, you know, but right now, that's how we solve it, okay? And uh, I'm not going to do one of these examples, but um, there's also the model for uh, population models and exponential growth. Um, so this is exponential decay, because things are getting smaller each time. Exponential growth model, I'm not even going to give you an example, I'll let you get started on your homework, you'll figure it out, okay? Mm -hmm. X, exponential, exponential growth, right? Looks like, uh, uh, Q of T or A of T doesn't matter. Um, uh, P of T equals A sub zero uh, E to the R T. Okay. So. Uh, so this again is your initial amount. This is for like population. Initial 
population, possibly. Population. And this is your growth rate. Growth rate. And that's time. And this is your population after. Pop after so much time. After time. After time t or something like that. Maybe we should do an example. Okay. Um, Fruit flies. Fruit flies. You know fruit flies? Fruit flies. You have them in your hands. Are growing, <coughs> growing at a rate, at a rate of uh, three percent per hour. Three percent per hour. Um, if you start with twenty. If you start with 20, how many, how many fruit flies are there in how many days? Three days. And your answer to that is a lot. Okay. Um, so, so in that one, if they're going three percent per hour, right? You're gonna plug in uh, twenty e raised to the point zero three times what? Seventy two, right? Because there's because there's twenty four hours a day, right? And 3% per hour. So let's do that with your calculator. Here, I have a calculator. I don't need Colton. You moved on. I moved on. I'm moving on. Wait. Let's just see. So uh, let's just do this together. Oh, I got this kind of calculator. That's OK. This one works, too. Okay. So. Uh, it's ugly calculator, but you want to change the color? <coughs> color. Let's make it lime. Ooh. No? You color contrast. OK, good enough. Anyway, um, so in this case, I'm going to go up 20 times E. Where's E? E is above the natural log E, okay? So second natural log raised to, in parentheses, uh, 0 .03, 0 0.03 times 20, okay? Close your parentheses. 70, 70, 72. Times 72. <coughs> I knew that. I was just seeing who was still paying attention. 72, okay? And then I hit enter. And so at that point, Oh, you'd only have 107, whoops, you'd have 173.42 fruit flies, okay? But you round off to the nearest fruit fly, okay? So you'd have about 173 fruit flies. And that's the end. What? A fruit fly, yes, they look like this. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. I don't know what a fruit fly looks like. <laughs>